Hello folks, welcome to another Third World Garage video. In this video we're going to be discussing Cold War era radiation detection equipment. Now the equipment you see before you would have been used by the United States in the Office of Civil Defense Management, or actually I'm sorry, OCDM which was Office of Civil Defense Mobilization in 61 only, or OCD, just Office of Civil Defense later rolled into FEMA and now into Department of Homeland Security. But this would have been an actual poster that would have been used for propaganda in the United States. Shows a mushroom cloud destroying a city. It was considered too scary and they never did that again. It was the only poster of that type. I always found it funny so I keep one in my man cave because I'm sick and twisted. But the instruments before you would have been used in the fallout shelter system in the United States. Now this device right here is called a CDB 715. This is, this is a high range survey meter. If this reads anything it's either broken, because it's in Rinkins per hour, or a nuclear bomb has just gone off, or you're at the site of a nuclear meltdown and things are about to get very bad for you. This one, however, reads in millirentgen per hour. The, at the top end of this, at the times 100 scale, I don't have batteries in it right now, but at the maximum reading it is one blip of this one at its lowest reading. Now these are usually broken because the electrometer tube has failed or it needs to be conditioned and there are instructions online on how to do that. But you basically are going to turn it on, I believe, at the X100 scale, and leave it there for 12 hours. Then turn it off, then turn it on, and then there's a specification of how high on the range this should go. It should only go like two or three pips on the lowest three and then maybe I think up to the one and then fall back down again on the on the highest. If it does any more than that it's fried and it's no good. Now these this would have been used for decontaminating food or, or personnel. This for just knowing when it's safe to go outside or to go do limited range survey work. These two loops here would have been used for a carry strap that the individual would have had on it, had on them, and this can be turned on with the old mercury type batteries for I think like a week before it runs out. So in modern battery, it lasts a very long time. However, most of them, including mine, unfortunately, and I'm the one who screwed it up, have suffered damage from batteries being left in them too long. That's why there's no batteries in them right now. But this one does work. Now. What did the Soviets use? Well, Soviets actually had a better civil defense program than the United States. Ours was very spotty and piecemeal. Um, the Soviets, basically every building was designed for fallout. They had shelter space for pretty much every citizen. Very well organized, very well done. Perhaps only the Swiss did it better. But if you'll permit me to walk in front of the camera, I'll take these and put them aside. And I've got a special treat. This is the Soviet radiation kit. Now instead of being two meters, the Soviets figured out how to do it in one. This was originally, I bought this out of Ukraine where it was originally stationed in 1991. This is actual writing from the from the Soviet factory that it came out of. And this is the manuals that come with it in the original plastic. This one here has all of the original, um, I believe it's this one, has all of the original the calibration that was done when this was brand new and then it was put in a warehouse for 30 years where I picked it up after the Ukraine, during the Ukrainian Civil War and I had it shipped to the United States. Now this is the sometimes called BP-5V 
or DP5B. I'm not exactly sure, but it does have a 5 and a B, so I think it's supposed to be a V in English for Cyrillic, but either way, somebody's going to know what you're talking about, at least in the United States. This, unfortunately, is a DP5A case that they sent me with it. So this right here, which is an extendable probe, has the wrong type clamp on the end for the actual probe from the meter. Remember, you'll see the Soviets, it's part of their engineering philosophy. Whoops, wrong side, that's the side with the battery. But while we're in here, might as well go into this. Everything on this, it's like an AK-47, it's all rationalized. It has, it came with extra tubes. This being the uh, STS-5 or SBM-10 type tube, which is extremely popular and you can get plenty of kits. You can buy just these tubes and they're very popular for DIY projects to make Geiger counters. And there's another one. This one is damaged, but it came with it, and so I kept that one. I have a couple of these tubes because I'm a nerd. But getting back to the battery compartment, this is one of the negatives to having these in the United States, is that they run a Soviet-style battery. You have To get it in the United States, you have to cut apart a Fortnite half volt square battery from Europe. I had to order mine from Germany. You'll see that they don't have any insulation on them, so I've got them insulated from each other. But these do work. These are fairly fresh batteries. And if they didn't work, here's one of the really cool things the Soviets did. And notice I say Soviets and not Russians, because not everybody was ethnically Russian, and the non-ethnic Russians were not always treated kindly in the Soviet Union. But you have a positive and a negative terminal, and they hook onto a car or bus battery. And this piece right here, you would take this part off, like that. I didn't say the Soviets were cumbersome sometimes. And this, um, these contacts would actually allow you to, and you can switch the contacts from 12 to 24 right here, and this would allow you to use a car or bus battery in, an emergency, in a nuclear emergency. Because it was expected if you were in the Soviet Union that you wouldn't always be close to the supply chain because of the size of the country. So a lot of the times their technologies were designed for service by the individual in the field, and this is no exception. You can see it's a very long cord. And also with a carry strap. And the other tube as well, which I don't have in here at this time. And that would have been a smaller glass tube, and that's for the high range. That's the same thing that the CDB715 would have done in the United States. Now the case itself is all vinyl, except for this flap here, which was expected to be opened and closed more often. They made that out of leather. Again, Soviet pragmatism. And this here is your probe. You pull it up, lock it in place, pull it up, and then eventually you come to this here. Now this is the, this metal here serves as the beta shield. So this will allow through betas, but you're really not going to measure alphas. And if you do it like this, it's going to measure gamma. If you have it set up like this, where this source, which is strontium-90, yttrium-90, it's going to be facing into the beta shield. It's an almost pure beta emitter, and that's used to test the unit. Now, it has a 28.8 year half-life, which is important when you consider the age of the unit. It's 1991. I'm filming this in 2018. So let's say 29 years would be... We're coming up on exactly one half-life in about another year. I'm not going to do the exact calculation because I'm lazy and because it's not really necessary. You're gonna, if you get a unit, it's going to be different than mine. I'm flipping it over, and we have the actual unit itself. One of the cool things is this and dial and this dial are glow-in-the-dark. Now you have this triangle here, 
You can see it's really nicely damped movement. And that's your test, that's your battery test. As long as it's in that line that's between the two scales, it works. And then this is in Renkin, so it's 200 times 1,000 times 100 times 10 times 1 and times 0.1. Now, I believe the way it's set up is the 200 runs on the, uh, the lower scale, and that's going to be your high range, which is going to run off of your small, less sensitive tube. And what we'll do here, though, we're going to put it on um, times 0 0.01. And we'll pull out the probe and demonstrate the check source. And so you can see it better, the Soviets included a light. There we go. Almost broke it off. And what I'll do here, as you can see, I am going to now rotate the check source and it maxes it. This is actually a fairly hot source of radiation but you're perfectly fine because here you'll detect nothing. It's a be pure beta emitter and the beta shield will will shield you from the beta emissions. You see now it's going to start to climb backwards. It's got a fairly good sized capacitor to dampen the oscillations. And it will crank back a little bit here. And that basically shows you, though, that the unit works. I'm going to turn it off. And you may be wondering, what happens if you break these environmental seals? Well, you open this, and you have a screwdriver, a complete set of seals over here. And you even have whatever these things are. Oh, those are new contacts for inside of the unit. You have sample collection bags right here. And in here, you have some Soviet earphones, which are designed to work with one of those unusual to an American Soviet hats. And again, fairly cheap packaging, which is what you get in a lot of Soviet goods. If you've ever played around with some stuff from the Soviet Union, they were very, very pragmatic when it came to that sort of thing. And another thing you'll find, which I always found really curious, is this screwdriver. It is the only tool necessary to take apart this unit. And also on the inside of the flap of the unit, in, in Russian, you'll have different um, levels and what it means, and that I believe is like caution in Russian. But I'm not sure, even though I have some Russian heritage. But it says USSR right on the top of the screwdriver. I always found that kind of neat. It says it in English. It's in Roman letters, not just in Ru Russian. So it's kind of like made in, made in the Soviet Union. So we're going to take this, and as you can see, where that was sitting in the, th in, the um, in the warehouse all those years, yeah, that, uh, that's where the, that's where the, the uh, check source was. So it actually decayed the metal that was underneath it. And that's about it. But these are these are good units. If you're looking for something that's not that old and is reasonably priced, the Soviet stuff nobody really cares about in the United States. I mean, some people do, but they don't really care about it that much. What you're going to see, especially in the prepping community, because America, is you're going to see these. And if you have people who really don't know what they're doing, they're going to think this is a Geiger counter. It's not. This is a Geiger tube right here. That little thin tube I showed you earlier, that's a Geiger tube. Right here, that's a Geiger tube. Different shape than this one, but they have about the same sensitivity. This is a, uh, I think it's an Anton 8993. This is the, once I said, like I said, this. CT, the STS-5, and this actually is an interesting history because this was developed for the Soviet uh, Sputnik program or the, or maybe Soyuz. It was originally designed for their uh, space program, and they just kept using it throughout the years. This being a survey meter, though, this is a, what's called an ion chamber. 
and that's this big circular disc here. This one, yeah, it doesn't work anymore, sadly. It was a functional unit for a long time. I actually was able to get this one to work. Although I was never able to test it because I don't have anything radioactive enough to test that with. Like I said, this is the most radioactive thing I have, is this test source right here. And it is fully legal to have because it is NRC exempt. And if you are wondering about a direct translation of some of the inside of that label, here it is. This is a direct translation that I could do using Google Translate to, from Russian to English by typing it in. God help me, I tried to convert my keyboard to Russian. It wasn't easy. Anyhow, I go ahead and put this all back together. And that's been another Third World Garage video, this time dealing with a subject that I feel that really hasn't been dealt with enough. Soviet-style Geiger counters. Have a good day.